Okay, my friends, this is Roger. You ever hear the song, I Want My MTV? Well, guess what? I want my Nobel Prize. <laughs> and why do I say that? It's because the, the um, Royal Institution says they will give a Nobel Prize to anybody that can explain this double split experiment. I can explain it very easily. See, here it is. If you can explain this using common sense and logic. Now, he says, if I can do it using common sense and logic, do let me know. This is Jim Al-Khalili, and this is the Royal Institute in London. So he's saying, if I let him know I can do this, and I really can, using common sense and logic, there's a Nobel Prize waiting for me. I want my Nobel Prize. All right, just to set you up for what's going to come. These are the particles we're discussing. They can see these particles, the fixed particle and the point particle. We're going to go through them in a little detail in a minute. And we have actually seen these and actually photographed them. And this is what they would consider the double slit experiment. Only we didn't need a double slit. We used a single slit because we could actually watch what was happening. And here the particles separated, and here they came back together. That's fission, and that's fusion. And they were f fused together here prior to slamming into the Venturi and separating. And this is known by CERN and all the rest of them, except they can't do it. We did it because we compressed the magnetic fields, so compressed to get through this Venturi that they separated. The black particles, which they show right here as Cherenkov radiation separated from the white ones. And then we created the interference patterns. They're not interference patterns. They are push patterns, push and shove. These white ones get in their line because they're pushing these guys away and pushing those. And they're pushing back and they're pushing back. That's what, that's what magnetic fields are. These just happen to be sprayed. But other ones surround magnetic particles like planets. Watch this. These new applications that can sense field activities and, and energetic regions are so unbelievable. It's, it's really incredible. I agree, but it's true. And this is just a cell phone taking a picture at, in the evening of the moon and whatever was around there. And you can see they're all dipoles. There's nothing that exists that's not a dipole. And they always create fields around them. And we've never been able to see them before, but now we can using this these highly sensitive energetic particle captures. That's what you're seeing. Because this is push to shove. I've talked about that before. It's put and it gets to the end and then that's it. It just can't go any further. You see how they keep getting wider and wider and wider? As you get close to the beginning, they're it's losing a little bit of energy all the way out. So there's a lot for them to understand about dipole nature of these particles and why we always have these fields. And that's the only reason is because they're dipoles. Okay, so here's why I say I can explain these particles. This was from a Fermi lab article by Don Lincoln back in 2013. And he found the same particles we found, only they don't know where they came from because they're starting with a hundred billion particles at once. We're starting with these particles all by themselves as light. And they see them, they see the dark and they see the bright spot. And one of them is a fixed particle, the black. And one of them is a point particle, which is the, the glowy one. And Don Lincoln explains it quite well. And the, the bottom line is, is that in summary, extended particles have a fixed size. That's the black one. They may have a fuzzy edge, which they do. Point-like particles are mathematical abstractions with no size at all that they can really determine. But even zero size particles have extended effect due to the effect of the surrounding field around them. And I agree with that 100%. We found exact same particles. And, uh, you know, I have a hard time. Don won't speak to me. I did talk to him, and I said, we found these particles. Can we talk? And he said, how did you find them? And I said, we, took, we were able to take pictures of them. He said, how did you do that? I said, with a cell phone. He said, that's it. You're done. And, and he, he won't ever talk to me again. I mean, you see, this, this goes back to 2014. This was just after he put out these articles about 
the particles. Smartphones network could track incoming cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are exactly what we're looking for, is that particle. They're muons and electron neutrinos. Those are what cosmic rays are. And smartphones are going to use a smartphone network to, to look for them throughout the whole world. There's nothing but smartphone stuff here. Okay, so Fermilab has got me blocked. And the reason is because I said the smartphones could track cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are the muons and electron neutrinos. They're ultra-high energy. You see here? They're using smartphones as an observatory for ultra-high energy cosmic rays. They do exactly what CERN and the rest of them want to do and can't do because they're using proton-based smashers. We're using photons and that's what CERN wanted to do and never could figure out how to do it. Okay, this is University of California, Irvine. This goes back to 2014 and it says your smartphone could become part of the world's largest telescope. Listen to this. A long-standing puzzle in astrophysics is the source of ultra-high energy particles from space that hit Earth called cosmic rays. They're up to a billion times more energetic than particles at CERN's Large Hadron Collider. They're more powerful. They strike the atmosphere, cause enormous showers of other particles, mostly muons, electrons, and photons over a wide area. Now listen to this. It says, the silicon-based sensors in smartphones, the ones in your pocket right now, use the same principles as detectors at CERN and elsewhere to identify these particles. But because the particles arrive so infrequently, a very large detector such as global network of smartphones is needed. Well, we can make them arrive in buckets. Now don't forget, the standard model does not work, and every scientist I've talked to agrees it's not correct. They can't, they can't tell you why gravity happens. They don't know where the dark matter is, and there's the dark matter attached to the bright matter that we never knew the dark matter was there. Nobody's ever seen it before, because it's dark. It doesn't emit, it doesn't um, absorb, and it doesn't reflect. The only way you can see this is what we did, putting it through the Venturi. So they keep calling on a standard model. Standard model's gone. Forget about it. It's no, it doesn't work. The new model is dipole electron flood theory, and that's new since 1970 when I first came up with it and since then I've just been fighting against a wall of of dense intelligence okay this is Fermi lab again and now they go into the quantum foam which says empty space is actually pretty complicated the quantum foam says that space is empty space is not empty it's completely saturated with particles this is Don Lincoln again and I think you should contact them and ask them why they won't look at my stuff. And their email is today at fnal.gov. They've spent probably trillions of dollars since this time. This is 2013 again. And refusing to look at my information it does not sp speak well for science. Okay, this really is not complicated at all. Muons are a component of cosmic rays. Muons are part of cosmic rays. Very energetic muons may even go faster than the speed of light in the atmosphere. Such muons emit a flash of Cheryankov light that facilitates their detection. Let's see if we can find that. All right, we just talked about Cheryankov radiation and the muons and the electron neutrinos separating and creating Cheryankov radiation when they hit a different medium. We did the same thing. These particles were attached together, the black and the white. When they accelerated past the speed of light, which is just what they just said, the muons were created at the Venturi. The muons are the black balls. You see it? The black ones. The white showers are the electron neutrinos. All right? And here they are being separated and coming back together instantly almost. And, but we still see the separation pattern, which is, they're, they're not interference 
flapping one to flap, pushing or sh they are pushing and showing, but it's because all the white ones don't want to be next to any other white ones, so they set up a line, pushing this way and pushing that way, and they just follow each other in the line the best they can. Now, when this started, they were attached right there. That's what they were, they were attached. This is the energetic value of this photon. This one's diminished in energy. This one is expended. It is um, intense in energy, you see? And the reason is it's hitting those little particles in front of it. It has to push through them. As it pushes through them, it gets excited. And the more it gets excited, the bigger it glows. And as soon as it glows big enough, it'll flip to the back, and that one will come to the front and be the absorber. They call that the muon wobble. By the way, that's dark matter. <laughs> Those black balls are dark matter. Never seen before. Okay, so Jim Al Khalili claims that if you can explain this using common sense and logic, do let me know. I am letting you know, sir, because there is a Nobel Prize for you. I want my Nobel Prize. <laughs> now, this is, again, the Royal Institution. These are the top people. And they're making these statements about all these different things, and so far they have refused to let me make any comments. Now, that's not science. That's, I don't find any science anymore. I've got to be honest with you, because he, now he's talking about physics and biology. Biology, this is a goose or a duck or something like that, and there's his feathers in the top of his head. This is not supposed to solidify like this according to geology and biology and physics and, you know, matter in any way. But I have understood why this happens. It's called nucleophilic invasion and substitution. And the insides of the throat and everything turn into basalt, and the outsides turn to feldspar. I have so much of this, it's just, and bones do the same thing as a bone. All of this is feldspar, and inside is basalts. And this is a whole new field of geology and biogeology. I call it bigology. <laughs> All right, here's a whole ball of wax. We got muons, and they stay muons when they hit some other and turn into Cheryankov. The electron neutrinos go into showers when they do go into Cheryankov, just exactly what they said. And they separate. That's fission. That's fusion. That's acceleration of light. All this stuff is new. You know, the Royal Institution is not the only one. Nobody knows anything about physics. <laughs> they don't know because they don't understand that the atomic model is completely wrong. Listen to what they say at Yale. This is Yale courses. I go to all these different places and listen to what they have to say, which doesn't make sense. Just like he said, that you can't explain anything with common sense. Listen to what he has to say. So this is a very exciting day for me because today we're going to start quantum mechanics and that's all we'll do till the end of the term. Now, I got bad news and good news. The bad news is that it's a subject that's kind of hard to follow intuitively, and the good news is that nobody can follow it intuitively. Uh, Richard Fine. The, it can't be followed. It just, just doesn't work. They have to change the, the, the nuclear model. The nuclear model is not one gigantic positive nucleus. This is not that at all. It's a dipole. I mean, one of the big uh, figures in physics used to say no one understands quantum mechanics. So, in some sense, the pressure is off for you guys because I don't get it and you don't get it and Feynman doesn't get it. The point is, here's my goal. Right now, I am the only one who doesn't understand quantum mechanics. In about seven days, all of you will be unable to understand quantum mechanics. Then you can go back and spread your ignorance everywhere else. Now, this is Professor Shankar, and this is Yale University. He's a good guy, because he's being honest. He's, 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 no, you can't understand this, so just say what I say, and then everybody will think you're smart. Basically, that's what it is, but you're spreading ignorance, because you don't have any clue what the atomic model is like. It's wrong. It's never been right. And then when I tell people it's wrong, all these physicists, when I ever get to contact and talk, everybody knows it's wrong. 
I said, well, why don't you do something about it? I'm not kidding you. Well, everybody knows, oh, that's been known for years. Boy, that's crazy, absolutely crazy. I said, well, what's the matter with my stuff? No, 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 we can't look at that. <laughs> okay, so let's see if Royal Institution is good to their word. This is the, these are the top people in science. The foundational principles were to diffuse knowledge, send it to the people, let them know and understand. Lectures, you see all these lecture hall stuff? They gave lectures. Mendeleev, I believe, gave a lecture from this very spot right there about the periodic chart. And it's close, but it's not right. It's a whole new... Everything is different now. Every single thing is different once you make an electron into a dipole. And then when you say that photon, uh, photons are dipoles back to back, and then when you say protons are not big positive p particles, they're dipoles of a whole batch of little particles. And there's about 1835 of these, the muon electron neutrino together, as a ball. And then more want to get in, and they say, no, 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 you can't get in, you have to stay a certain distance away. That's quantum. So if there's five protons in here, basically five balls of, of matter in here, there's going to be five more electrons that want to get in. It gets a little confusing, but it's, it's you know, we need to do some discussion. We need to do this. Nobody will talk to me. I've been cut off from everybody. It's because they won't even look into the, the actual physical research we did. That's very disturbing to me.